Critique time. Let's do this. So first up, Barrel. Barrel. So wait, Barrel is who? Because someone in chat was saying uh, they are Barrel, but... Like, who said that they made the mech? Because it's weird that you have two usernames. It's Raph. Uh oh, Raph, why how come? How come you're barrel in here? That's confusing, man. Uh so I mean this mech's pretty crazy. He instantly looks like he's gonna fall backwards. Cause like if you look at uh this bottom image or the bottom part of this image, the legs are here, right? So the center of gravity is or like the center of mass is here. But then all the heavy stuff is behind him. Dude, he's totally going to fall backwards. You don't know how you will change it? I got you, man. Question is, can I highlight your name? I think that'll fix it. You know you can control R Discord and it'll refresh it. There you go. Fix a Rooney. Uh okay, so let's get going on this, huh? Okay, last image when st when stream critique to be held or design silhouette idea make it I'm going to blow this up so you guys can read it if you want. It's still very block out ish. So this is not very block out ish. This is like, you're starting to detail stuff, man. Um, block out would be like very primitive shapes and, and stuff like that. You know, anything I can critique would be rewarding. So make sure that he does not look like he can fall backwards. Um, loosen up the muscle structure a little bit because the arms look like, like the guy was ripped and then mummified. Uh, let's see what else we got here. You need more areas like the, the legs here, areas of rest right now. You have tons of detail everywhere. And I think the feet could possibly be bigger or like. This back part here, if this came back a little bit further and then the feet came out the same size, but just a little bit longer here, the center of gravity would be more forward and then thusly he would not look like he's about to fall backwards. Um, other than that, I think these little like tentacle dread things, I think if some of them were a little higher and some of them were lower, then you could get some more variety in that. The uh, the arms look a little short, like the the organic arms. Well, it's weird. There's four arms, right? This looks painful to make, man. What are areas of rest for? Okay, so areas of rest are um. Let's see here. So if you look at this mic on the back, right? See these little details here? Um, those are high detail or high frequency detail. Um, the areas of rest are areas where there's less frequency of detail and a good rule of thumb that uh, everyone should go by is the 30 to 70 ratio. So 70% of your asset should have areas of rest, which is like smooth, like low frequency areas that your eyes can rest on. Those are areas of rest. The other 30% is high frequency like this. The moment you have high frequency going past 30% is the moment your asset starts uh, tiring the eyes of the viewer. And the, the higher that the 
high frequency percentage gets, the harder it is to look at and distinguish and understand the shape itself. Does that answer your question, Underclocked? But yeah, that's why you want to stick in block out for as long as possible. That way you can see that like uh, his weight is very back heavy and that you need to adjust the legs accordingly um, to account for the weight being so far back. Because now that you're as far as you are now with the now that you now is now, now that you're as far as you, as you are, it's going to be really difficult or not difficult, very time consuming to adjust those things. But yeah, in general, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's very strange that there's four arms or a tentacle thing and then three arms and a belly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A good balance of detail is the uh, the aliens in Crisis 3. You should see how much detail they're putting on them while still keeping the ratio of high frequency versus areas of rest. That's uh it's pretty it's pretty good. Guns. Got a gun. Uh latest piece, last weapon for portfolio for now at least. Can we critique on the model, especially textures, since the model and bakes are kind of okay. Okay, let's let's see here. So the modeling and the bakes look all right, like you're saying. This is interesting. I like this with the different lighting scenarios. So the gun is really busy. Oh man, those look awesome. So the the amount of venting or like open space on the weapon is really high. I don't know if that's necessarily needed. And this is the the problem with the high frequency. See like the the silencer area of rest and then the next area of rest is the the butt of the gun. Dude, that low poly though. Holy shit. Let's, uh, let's load this guy up. So I think there's a resolution limit on uh, Marmoset viewer, right? So let's let's take a look at... Oh, there we go. That's interesting. So the noise in the normal or in the, uh, let me double check if that's the normal. So there's a little bit of noise in the normal here. You probably don't need that noise in your albedo because like, why would those little, like, why would it be speckles of darkness in the material itself? Uh, if you're a novice, I would use Sketchfab for now. When Sketchfab isn't giving you what you need, then you can uh, get a hold of Marvelous. So yeah, removing that noise in the albedo is going to be pretty helpful in the on the butt here um as far as gloss and stuff goes like that's really interesting that this is so blank but then there's so much information going on here like i feel like this is you almost need areas of rest in your roughness as well in order to like this looks pretty cool and i'm i'm curious why this one is not reflecting similar uh information So like in your material, material wise, I'm, I'm getting a lot of, uh, information that's coming from the, um, 
the gloss map. Yeah, that's interesting. I would uh, talk to more gun people because I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to guns. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. One K, yeah, that's pretty low res. What's up, Andre? How you doing? Um, but yeah, I think uh, overall modeling is fine. It's just the it's your materials. You really need to like define. Like this area is feeling pretty cool. The scale of the noise on this is really large. Like it needs to be tiled a bit more. And I think uh, Marvelous is limiting you because you can't control stuff like that, can you? Like detail normals and, and whatnot. AK is no way overkill, man. There's so much you can do with AK. Because the, the idea is not for game, right? It's for render. Always render at 4K at least and down res it to 2K if you need to. Always. Because that will do the anti-aliasing for you. And will kill so much banding, and your renders just look so much better when you render at 4K and then down res it to 2. It's like super sampling. And 8K allows you to down res to 4K and then print it. That's why it goes that high. What is banding? Or banding or aliasing, like if you see a fence doing this crazy like pattern. Actually, I'll show you because I have the perfect example of what not to do on my portfolio. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this image, right? It's because I was lazy. I didn't end up rendering it at a uh, higher res. So you see the, you get aliasing stepping, right? Because there's no, uh, hey, thanks for the follow, man. So that banding there is the result of low res, right? If I rendered this out at 2K and then down, downed it to um, like a 1080 or whatever, or um, rendered at 4K and then d down res it to like monitor resolution, that edging goes away and smooths it out. And then this, this is the banding of like, let's see here. I'm not really showing any banding here, but like everything is so much crunchier, right? Like that's the res and you see the, the jaggedness, the jaggies. That's kind of banding that you're seeing there, but you usually see it on like uh, things like, um, like a fence, a fence material or like a chain link fence. I mean, it's like a weird pattern that bends and turns. So did I do all the assets? I did none of the assets in this scene. Yeah, super sampling essentially is what I'm talking about, TBS. So I just did a lot of propping, lighting, and yeah. Um, but I digress. Next up, we've got Leo Luck. Just started a new location, first open world location in portfolio. Any recommendations, references, AC2, so cast Dragon Age, which are, I mean, I would just keep compositionally. This is very strong right now. I would just keep going. Uh, maybe having this is more of a, uh, a flatter field could be, could be nice. And uh, being careful with this. Oh man, we're, we're getting it out. We're getting the, uh, where's it at? So this edge here is a little wobbly. Be careful with that. I already, I forgot how to clear stuff. Wait, hang on. Seven. Yeah. Control shift seven. How awkward is that?
but you probably want this to be more like that. And wherever there's a, a bump that you want, you probably do it with a rock instead of like the terrain itself. But in general, I think this is looking pretty good. This edge here, like, I know you're trying to display a, a gap between there. And the only thing that's telling me that right now is that the bridge is there and you can see it going down. Doing something down there in order to get that gap to be more apparent is going to be important. Uh, only other thing I would say is... Um, You have, you have this sticking out. These guys are sticking out a little bit. I don't know why. And uh, I would look at more castle reference to understand the layout of walls and entryways and just try and make sense out of that. I like I haven't looked at any of that type of stuff, so I'm not sure. Because like the these top points. I bet they would leave those as open because those would be really good vantage points versus putting a, a, a top on it. But I, I like the mountains in the back. This is nice. It flows into this area, which is really good. So you have really nice flow and composition currently. Uh, you're showing a lot of the sky. So you either need to make a really cool looking sky with like a sun or something behind clouds or a storm coming in from the distance. Or you need to uh, pan the camera down a little bit more so that you show more of the ground and path leading up to the entrance. Oh, yeah, and be careful with the – there's like tiling right now on the path. I don't know if you can see that. It's like – yeah. Anywho, looking cool. A storm would look awesome. You know, when clouds are raining in the distance, you can see them like the cloud streaking down. Super powerful. <clears throat> uh, the other thing, too, is if I copy this image and bring it into PhotoPoo. So if you look at your histogram right now, you're not using any of your high range. So there should be like if the sun is out. The sun's hitting something, right? And I think it's hitting this area right here in this side here. Those should be the brightest points of the image. And then it's a matter of like how much you want it to. I can see that you've got some distance fog in there, which is really good. This distance is it's really working already, so that's that's pretty nice. What software was this image made with? I'm not sure. You should... Uh, I would assume this is an Unreal. This looks like Unreal terrain. Uh, and then the geometry was probably done in Maya, Max, or Moto. Maybe Blender. Hopefully that answers some questions for you. Okay, next up we've got uh, Snickers. Would appreciate feedback mainly on basic composition slash object placement, but anything that comes to your mind would be great. Okay, so I'm going to hang on. Ah, I wanted to type, but I'm going to scroll instead. So in this shot, you basically have uh, just a cut in and two doors, right? Let's um, let's see if I can do something about that pen tool. So if you, uh, if you use the pen tool and then you go into drop down to do wall mode, you can do like outer or inner. 
and you can give it a thickness. Stupid, awesome, and useful, right? Oop. Oh, it's in the same mesh container. So, so if we're looking at it right now, we're looking at it from like this angle. Actually, I need to, there we go. Right now we're looking at it from like this angle and you've got a lot of propping and stuff going on here and a little bit here. I like the detail of the pillars on the side. Uh, you have a doorway here, which I'll just kind of, we'll just, we'll just fake it for now. And then you have a, a wide doorway in the back over here. So I like the fire hydrant. The sidewalk feels a bit narrow and the camera angle is not very interesting. Like, uh, like you probably want to go like you either do a low camera or like a pie. Like think about maybe putting like a security camera up here or whatnot. That's like supposed to be watching this corner. And then the camera is your view angles over the security camera, you know? So then you're like overseeing this, this corner because there's so many stories that you can tell with what's going on back here. Uh, the other thing too is like, this is one building, this is one building and this is one building or is, is this like all one building or is it three buildings or is that a back wall to a building on the other side? Is this wall like, you know what I mean? Getting some separation with that stuff is really going to help you. And then thinking about what this back area is used for. Like you have a dumpster, but because these buildings are really tall, most likely the dumpster uh, needs to be more than one because there's a lot of people bringing trash out. So there's probably two to two to four back here, maybe even some on the side here. So maybe two over here and two over here. Um, you've got a barrel back there. So maybe like right now, none of the propping makes sense. Like part this, pardon this guy, uh, this, uh, cement barrier thing. Why is it back there and what is it protecting? Right. The fire hydrant makes sense. Um, the, the dumpster makes sense. The, the fire barrel thing. I don't know if it's a fire barrel or whatnot, but if it's red, you expect when you shoot it, it'll blow up. It's one on the right and one on the left. What about the back wall though? What is that? Is that part of the right building or the left building? Um, I like the the stairs and the uh, fire escape. That's really good. It, right now it feels a little flimsy. I think adding some caps and stuff that make it look like it, it's connected will be really useful. Like, um, let me do this. So let's say you let's say that this is a the cap that I'm talking about that would go like right here and right here. It's like something that helps connect and ground it. It's connected to the right one. Okay, cool. That is good to know. So like in the materials, you're going to have to make sure that those look like they're part of the same building. Or I mean, or maybe they're not. I it's just like making sense out of like how this is all put together is is important these two buildings as well are they on the same like uh it could be interesting to have one come further out and then have the sidewalk uh let's do that it could be interesting to have the sidewalk coming further out and then because this is like a back alley area maybe this this spot right here needs to dip down so like do cars back into this or, you know, I like the, this here, it needs to be sunk into the ground. Of course, when, uh, when you cut the ground out at some point, um, 
but place their props where you expect them to be. And then I think you're building this out of your memory versus like looking at reference because these, these should be thinner and there should be uh, more of them, I guess. Like the way this is connecting over the top of this one is very strange. And usually when there's one, there's a couple of them. Just make sure you're always looking at reference. This was actually a really good one to critique because there's a lot of stuff to say. Um, and then think about everything that would possibly be there. So if there's a door here, the door is so close to the edge of the wall. Like I expect maybe the door to be a little bit further this way. And is there an awning over it? Is there windows somewhere? Like where does the floor stop and the next floor begin? And how do you display that on the outside? You know what I mean? Buildings are a freaking can of worms, man. The moment you start suggesting it's a building, there's so many things you have to add in order for it to sell itself. Start with windows and uh, figure out where your doors, like this door needs to go further to the left, I think, just for structural reasons. And then uh, some type of awning maybe. Oh man, saxophone incoming. I should just have a saxophone play when uh, when people sub. <laughs> Anywho, hopefully that answered a bunch of questions. That was a ton of stuff I just spewed out. Oh, right. So these rocks, they are rocking 100% awesome. Awning. An awning is a, um, it's like, you know, it's raining and you have like the, like an awning over you or like a, a top. Let me, here, hang on. This is why Google is amazing, right? So these are awnings. They're small, but they're on windows, right? So it's a good way to break up. Like this is an awning as well. Here's a here's a pretty hardcore one. So you could do something like this. It doesn't have to be that long. But see how there's like windows and there's display. Like there is a there's a structural uh language that happens with all buildings that like we never really pay attention to until you have to build them. Then you realize they're there. Like a, like building's nice, Trump Tower. Uh, the bottom floor tends to be really tall. And entrances tend to have awnings over them. And or carpets that kind of go out for you to stand, stand on that's under the awning. Depends on what the entrance is as well. Is that a back door or is that a front door? Is it like a maintenance door? So many questions. <laughs> so we've got a rock pile here from Knock. Uh, looks pretty cool. I think the roughness information of the rock versus the mud, those need to separate out a little bit more. And the rocks are uh, unnaturally piled up. If it's in a scene where it looks like people have been uh, digging through a rock wall and they're piling rocks up, then it'll make sense. But the way that the dirt has caked into the sides of the rock and it's just like in the crevices and kind of melted it all together is very, it's very odd looking. It looks like an attempt at starting to build a rock wall, but gave up halfway through. Um, the mud looks pretty nice. And I think just getting some variation in the albedo and roughness in comparison to the roughness of the rock is going to be really important. Cause like, remember where, where materials get wet, uh, depending on how uh, porous they are, they will become more saturated if they're really porous and not as saturated if they're not porous. So like the mud will become quite saturated, right. And darker in value uh, where it's wet and where it's, drier and and or just dry is going to be much lighter in comparison and then the rock as well is going to be uh, a little bit darker where it's wet uh, if there's imperfections 
material wise in, inside of the rock, that's when you're going to get um, those areas not darkening while the rest does. Like you can see that in like um, certain types of stone where there's a mix of different types of rock. The sidewalks will do that sometimes depending on the material. But in general, it looks good. And I think uh, these little outlier guys like this, building another set to help you uh, smooth out that transition so the the rocks aren't just bunched up and they kind of get like scattered out a bit. This is going to help a lot. Hopefully that was uh, useful. Ah, yes. Some crit before picking this one back up. Haven't worked on it for six months. Uh, to, uh, texture this. Uh, <laughs> no. So, uh, these walls, because you're like, crit, 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 crit. Guns. Hmm. I don't know. It looks good. Environment stuff. Crit, 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 crit. <laughs> so, this is looking pretty, pretty nice already. It looks exactly how I remember it last. Uh, really like this curtain because you can see the light passing through it. Oh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, or shade or blind, if you call it that. Uh, figuring out how the ceiling is held together is going to be really important. And because you're not shipping this, I would suggest uh, modeling these walls with the little area dented in. Like this little crease here, just bevel that inward. Extrude it inward and add like a one bevel. It's going to make it a bit expensive, but make it look good, right? And then uh, I think the only other thing is you need some some good ambient occlusion and some ground contact with your props. That and uh, this, like, this, like, table, this side table thing is lacking a lot of depth right now. I think either some value shifting in the albedo to kind of push stuff back or some roughness variation like these little handles looking more like metal and popping a bit more would probably help. This guy feels uh, like a primitive right now and I think either using a displacement and tessellation to push that information out would would help a lot or modeling it so that those are sticking up a bit more so there's a bit more uh tension in how it's kind of put together bedlam what's up man but i'll leave it at that for now uh for these guys i would just do a quick auto unwrap on them like this one looks like it's probably already unwrapped and just throw a material on it that way it's not because right now the 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 grid pattern on it does distract you from the overall composition to be able to make calls on things. Same with the ceiling. Um, but yeah, and then the outside, I guess you could either like delete that or just put a gray texture on it. All right, onward. Oh, another angle. So I really like this this chair. It's got a lot of character to it, and I, I'm wanting that amount of detail and character on the rest of the scene. This is definitely un Uncharted inspired. Uh, and then there's some lighting bakes with like your wall pieces. It looks like where like you have a separation here. That could be a problem with your lighting. Uh, so it looks like maybe you're building this modularly then. So like you've got two wall pieces uh, back here. And one has double windows and one has a door with uh, maybe double door, depending on how wide that frame is, and then two windows to the side of it. Uh, it's not for personal art. You don't have to make those separate if you don't want to. It might make it easier to work on too, but um, yeah. A gun. A gun. The hundredth user to join the discord. I'm mostly interested in textures and rendering for this one since a lot of, a lot of it seems kind of off. 
So right now it does feel like I like the attention to the kind of noise uh, for material definition. Uh, right now you're missing, like this area looks pretty good. But it really nice, dude, even the barreling, man. Uh, yeah, right now it's just missing the, what this material feels like and looks like. We are taking over. Just because you make guns, Ricky. Here, Ricky. Take that. Um, yeah. Some roughness variation. And paying attention to how materials look like in um, in real life. Like, look at videos and see if there's... See if there's a gun YouTube channel that someone is really, like... Uh, really into guns and like how they look and stuff. So they're doing a lot of beauty shots where they're like slow rotating and stuff. You'll see a lot more like roughness variation and breakup separating out materials based on what they actually are. Cause right now everything feels kind of samey here. Like I don't see metal. I kind of see like some stone almost and maybe some plastics, but the roughness is off. This is the only thing that feels is feeling right currently, but you'll get it. I'm pretty confident. Nice. Jesus. That's cool. You know what would be really cool is if Sketchfab or Marmoset had like a critique mode where I could go, I could click on this and then like slide the roughness around or like change the the value of the albedo just to kind of get points across more so than like actually try and do it correctly. It's just kind of like see this this range feels more and like a metalness slider and then you can just select the parts and kind of like That'd be pretty nice, actually. You heard it here first, guys. Hey, thanks for the follow, man. Oh, yeah, I saw this one. I was like, dude, that's awesome. So this is pretty cool. Uh, paneling is everywhere. Um, definitely look at reference. I have no idea what this vehicle looks like when analyzing it up close. Uh, but right now I feel like you're right now. I feel like you've textured a, a detailed block out. Like everything is very low poly. You could probably quadruple the poly count and you're then approaching, um, current gen triple a like don't be shy to add details and stuff like uh this area here um oh damn it the problem the problem is real So like where this is, where that meets the base here, like the grading is going into that. You got to be careful about that or, uh, or make sense of it. Like maybe the grading needs to end here or go like this. And then the rest can be solved because of that. This is too crazy for me. There we go. So like if the floor grading did this, then the rest can solve itself and then you just need to be adding some details to like connect that to the to the ground and then how do these rotate like right now you've got this connected like this is all baked as one piece totally bake these separately so that way you can actually rotate it and move things around um yeah oh every time 
Um, and then check, check with a reference to see where all the panel lines are and like how everything kind of sticks and fits together. And if there's any details in here, because right now it's super empty. This is why I was saying it kind of looks like a block out. Uh, this could probably be its own little piece that you can place. That's, that's got a little bit of geometry to it. So it's kind of sticking up a bit. The overall look though is pretty nice. Let me just do this. Like it's got the feel. It's just close inspection. It starts to break down pretty quickly. So go back to your reference, add all the little details that you see and uh, make sure that everything looks like it can fit together better. Like this, this stuff here. And then, and then go back to your texturing. Like uh, I would, texturing is so fast nowadays with pr procedural texturing and auto mask generation and all that jazz. Just remove all your textures and get all the details that you're trying to get on there that are on the actual asset. I'm sure there's some pretty good references. Uh, all right. Up next, do this one. It's pretty, it's pretty sick. Uh, looks pretty nice. This is like, um, this is like if, uh, Blizzard were to start using all of the maps on their materials. This looks really good. And I think if I had to say anything, is I don't I don't understand the scale, but the material looks freaking great. And this uh the stepping that you're doing in this GIF, I would just like add a ton of them in there so that way it's it's like a smoother or like record video and turn it into a GIF where you see it like transition smoothly. I don't, I mean, I don't have anything to say on this though. It looks really good. It's really, actually, it's really interesting. Your uh, albedo is so blank in areas. Like you're, you're topping out your ranges here, but your roughness is carrying all of the information for you. Pretty cool. I'm gonna move this over here for now. Yeah, I don't I don't really have too much to say on this. Maybe I don't know. I need context, I guess. But execution wise this is ace. It, it even looks good without the lava on. You're like, oh wow, that material is really interesting. The heat, the temperature. Pistol, pistol, whip, uh, stream. Color composition balance. I mean, going back to this, I don't think, I think it'll tile really quickly because the way it ends up getting used would tile a lot. So if you can find a way to make another one that can blend nicely with this one, then you can just vertex paint between them to free up all the blending. It's just sick lava. Get out of here, Ricky. You're a gun guy. <laughs> um, Grumpy Kitten, what is up? Let's uh, let's take a look at this. Load model. So this has come a long way. Very nice job. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this is, I don't know if you guys remember this one, but it has really come a long way. Dang, I kind of need the reference. It's very Kingdom Hearts, yes. So... 
Uh, oh, yeah, you just went for it. I freaking love it. Nice. Nice addition. You guys see those? They're even casting shadow. Oh, man. So, I think what we're missing now is your uh, the roughness or the specular, whichever one's being used. If you can use that to separate out materials a little bit more, that would put you in a really good spot, I think. So like where the, you have these details that look like metal is to get some more reflective properties to them. Unless you want it to all be hand painted. In that case, I would just try and get a bit more shine to this and uh, some highlights on this either through specular or in the albedo. Uh, there's a, whoop, hang on here. There's a seam here. I would go in and try and paint that out if you can. Or find a way to clean that up. This, see how this is light here? This looks great. And under here, you're not seeing that, that light value. I wonder if it's like that in the uh, concept. Uh, but make sure that you get some of that color down here. Just so this isn't so dark and blank. Yeah, a lot of your albedo is, um, so if I press I, right? Yeah, metalness. So it's no metalness. What's your roughness look like? Yeah, so right now your roughness is pretty blank. Like th You've got some information happening here, which I actually now I'm kind of curious why that's... That's interesting. Um... Play with your roughness some more. Oh, yeah, normal maps. Passy, specular. So base color. So in your base color, you're actually missing a lot of highlights, and you're either going to put that in your reference. Oh, it's in the... Oh, man, thanks. There it is. Okay, so, yeah, they're not really showing it, but there's a little bit of purple down here, like lighter, like pink purpley colors. I don't know what that color is. Uh, maybe bringing that into your asset to lighten up the bottom. Is there a uh, way to, it does not look like they do. Yeah, I would just get some highlights, oops. And this is more green. See, yours is more, at least to me, it's more yellow here. And I think if you add some more green to that, you compare that color to the ground color and then look at it here. It'll tell you a lot. Pretty cool. Most impressive. This has really, really come a long way. Uh, so well done. Ricky has triggered a gun pun. Day ruined. Why are you pouring salt out, man? It's bad luck, isn't it? it better be over the shoulder. Uh, cool. This is, yeah, this is looking great. I would, the biggest things are the highlights on the rock and this being really dark. And then if you can do anything in your roughness to play with the materials, that would be huge, I think. Uh, and then metalness. Try giving uh, your metal, the areas that you expect to be metal, try giving them some metalness and see how it looks to you. Go full, full range all the way down and just check it out and see how it looks. It might be too crazy because it's more of a hand-painted look. But, um, yeah. And then in your roughness... Like, see, these are pretty reflective. And I think if you added metalness to them, they would go much further. I'm, like, trying to understand what I'm looking at material-wise. This is killing me. 
This camera control is crazy. Yeah, look how awesome that is. Nice. Uh, is it? I your normals might be. No, I maybe they're right. Maybe they're correct. I can't tell. You might try flipping the green channel on your normal and see how the material looks to you. But yeah, super cool. Double click on a spot. To, oh my god. Oh my god. Thank you. That's very useful. You don't want to show your work anymore? Dude, you gotta, you gotta, you just, you gotta. Uh, where are we at here? Why is that way over here? Oh, I see what I did. What? I'm like, where is this gun? So somehow I skipped this one. Did I skip this one? Oh my God. Okay, hang on. I'm uh, gonna close all these. I did that one. I did this one. We'll go here. Roughly followed this concept. Dude, this scene looks sick already. So this one is, uh, you're just gonna need to do some work on your roughness i mean it's just about a matter of defining your materials a little bit more and distinguishing them from the other materials like see how reflective that is yours doesn't have that reflectiveness right it's not as smooth man i think ricky's getting triggered because he's not mod yet i think that's what's going on But the uh, attention to detail and propping is, is pretty nice. Compositionally, it looks pretty strong. This light feels very forward. Uh, like it's shining here and I maybe it would go back a little bit or it should be a little bit higher. I'm not sure. Better put that on safety, Ricky. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think it's just roughness variation. Trying to sell those materials. Like this, this is getting close to the material texturally, like how, how it looks in the lighting. And then this one is getting close as well. It does feel a little low poly. Does this one tessellate as it gets closer to you? Because it looks sharper here, but down there it's fine. Make the Empire great again? Oh my god. Grandpa, get out of here. Um, Yeah, there's lots of storytelling going on in here too, though. It's pretty cool. The material on the... Oh, I can't zoom in. The material on the back... Uh, wall like floorboarding stuff or the floorboard material here this the wood pattern in the grain seems really low res or like it's tiling very little i don't know if that makes sense but the the grain seems quite large and the projector's on but there's nothing on it or what and where's the, is the projector in the scene? Did you model the projector? These books and, and stuff, I would, I would, uh, put them everywhere. Like put a book that's up against the side of the chair inside of here, or maybe a few that are stacked. Um, yeah. Oh man, that rug looks really good over there in the, uh, lighting only. Maybe push some of the contrast out from this albedo and it'll look like more like this 
So this looks really nice. And I think your albedo is uh, masking a lot of that information. The projector's on the table. Oh, shit, it is. Look at that. Brow. What am I... My my mind immediately thinks, put it on the ceiling. So with all these really awesome assets, I would actually like to see some of them close up. Like a close up camera angle of the table. Like right now you're only doing one angle. I would love to see a few other angles. Maybe one on this, on the coffee table, one on the desk. Maybe one over the, by the painting area. Oh, uh, Ricky, it's only you that's making it entertaining, man. It's, it, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it because of you. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a rug over here, too. Um, yeah, curtains do look pretty nice. The outside is, is uh, pretty nice as well. Let me see the... See, so might even make the sky and the outside or the buildings maybe a little bit brighter to reflect uh, the lighting of the sky would probably look better like right now the buildings are look like they're in a different lighting scenario from the sky but uh, yeah onward oh I'm blind So this is a big project for me as a beginner. We'll apply some dust and more scratches. Anything to improve. It's always something to improve, right? So the blast lines here look painted in. Um, I would see how you can... Oh, man, that's difficult. I wouldn't paint those in, though. Um, resolution of the pattern is very low looking I'm actually curious as to oh wow you're using 3d coat too that's awesome it's cool to see people try other things or have other workflows from like your norm Sai what's up man Uh, I would like to see a version of this without the camouflage on it. If that's not too crazy. Just because then it would be much easier to kind of critique some stuff. Maybe some some dirtiness inside of the the track wells or the wheel wells to the track could be nice. But it's actually, it's kind of hard to say anything. Like, the lighting scenario right now is really bright, so everything's kind of getting blown out as well. And these bolts or rivets are really big. I don't know if they're supposed to be that large. But yeah, uh, I would love to see this without textures on it, or without the, the camouflage on it, just so we can depict some of the details a little bit easier. There's uh, this, um, what is this? The weld lines are very even. Let's see if you could like, like unclean those up a little bit, I guess, or like uh, make them not so clean, not too perfect. Like right now they're really perfect. And the resolution is just in general, looks kind of low for everything, I think. Don't be shy to do uh, 2048 or more if you need to, or separate them out into parts. Okay, gun. It is 1157, by the way, so we'll be getting out of here as soon as I finish these up. And we've got a sci-fi pistol. This looks pretty cool. I like the blockiness of the shapes on the back. This actually does not look uh, a small one-day project goal was to create a uh, sci-fi pistol. So. My personal opinion, I would put this in your blog if you're paying for pro. Just because 
you didn't technically, I mean, it was a one day job and the front looks really good. I would just go back and clean up these edges, like give them the treatment that the, this giant, like fat silencer has. Every texture tells a tale. Yes. To the, to tank man. To Tar Tarvik, Tarvik. Yes, make sure you. Uh... So in chat they're saying, work on where uh, every texture tells a story. Which is it's good that you added the uh, the little like ding from a tank round on the side of it. It just needs some more polish work. Uh, I would finish this. If you're gonna post it on your portfolio, you gotta finish it. Or don't finish it and put it in your blog. Pretty cool. It's in Blender as well in 3D Coat. But the uh, the front piece is dope. I would love to see that level of execution across the entire model. Mm-hmm. Steven. Steven with a truck covered in snow. Oh man, resolutions. Let's go. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I'd be really careful about adding a normal for the snow on the side. Mm, that's almost debatable. I'm not sure yet. I think that uh, where snow builds up and tends to clump, I would totally add geometry of snow. But in general, this looks pretty solid. Um, Information in your roughness for the paint is kind of lacking where it could could have more. I think this door is floating. Yes, yes it is. And the only thing that's telling me that is that shadow. Yeah, and this is very clean for how dirty, because like when there's snow, Oh, my bad. That's no, all good, man. It's pretty cool. Uh, now that I'm looking at the snow on the side here, I think it's okay. It's weird that it's up here and maybe not further down. And when a truck is driving, oh, subtle streaks from melted melted snow. Oh, my God. That's genius. It's kind of like uh, what's going on here, but less compressed. Uh so when, when a truck is driving through snow, it gets really dirty, right? Like the dirt is mixing with the snow and then it, you're going to get really gross caked stuff down here. Like this stuff is going to get real dirty. The other thing is you should definitely have a HDR of a snowy scene. It's going to really, really push the rest of your materials in that direction. Oh, this area looks dope. Yeah, that's cool. Man, look at the... It's like you can feel... It's like you can feel it, especially over here. Oh, man. Yeah, see up here? You could totally add a little bit of geometry to just kind of give the snow some, some, some thickness. Even here as well. Just add a few cuts and pull some verts up just to... I know it ruins the mesh a little bit as far as like, oh, now I don't want a snow version. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and just really dirty it up. These mud flaps also are very thick. Probably thin those up a bit and then give them a little bit of a, a bend so that they look like they've seen some shit. <laughs> yeah, dirty this, this bad boy up and you'll be good. It's pretty sick, though. It's well done. Yeah, it's those metal pieces that are bugging me right now because they just feel like uh, it was applied and that was it. They're too reflective, I guess. Getting the division vibe? Oh, you can't add your... 
own environments to Sketchfab, you should you should contact them about that. I'm sure they would add it for you. I should use Sketchfab more just so I can have a better understanding of it for you guys. Um, let's keep going here. Hi, renders of my 3D model are here. Hi. Oh. Whoa, that thing looks freaking mean. Moto, eh? Moto. This thing's terrifying. I think all it's missing is some detail normal to kind of uh, like finish the, the material through. Because right now it feels like it gets soft in areas. But that thing is freaking terrifying. Uh, compositionally for the layout of the body and stuff, it looks pretty good. The back fin is kind of small. I guess maybe uh, the yeah the fin in the back is strange, but eh, it's based off of uh, Piranha Three DD, Three Double D. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. That thing's terrifying. Piranha movies, man. I remember the original. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I just get some detail normal information in there. That'll help you sell. It's cute at the same time. You're like, oh, and then your hand's gone. Not cute anymore. Like some feedback on this material study before I start working on the albedo. Check whip three. It looks pretty nice. So this is no albedo. This is just uh, roughness. So this is how you should approach materials, guys. Is uh, Get your height map. Get your normal map. Get a nice displacement. Get an AO in there so that you can see how things interact with each other on the AO level. And uh, do a roughness pass. So basically do, do it in that order. Height map, normal map, AO, roughness. And then do your albedo. Because if it can look good without albedo on it, you're golden. Then your albedo actually ends up becoming more subtle. And it, micro, micro color variations end up happening because you don't actually need to do too much in your albedo. It's more of like an overall tone. Uh, this looks, I mean, this looks pretty solid, man. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. And the roughness variation looks like it's... It's in a good spot. I think that, um, let me see if there's a, so you have this. So there's this type of like noisy, I don't know. It's like a, it's like lengthy pitting or like sinewy pitting. If that makes sense. Let's see if it's, so right now I think you're lacking that. It's kind of happening here, but it, it needs to happen a bit larger, like about that big. And you could probably just do a, do a noise, clamp it down so that you're getting some, some spots and then do some warping to kind of skew it and bend it around and warp it around and stuff. Uh, other than that, I mean, looks, looks pretty solid. Nicely done so far. And you're using the blog stuff. So cool. Really nice to see. Yes. Yes. Um. Oh, that was it. That was it, guys. Oh, my God. Just as the music stopped, right? No, nope, music's back. Weird. So there's a there's a free HDR, is it HDR I Haven or whatnot? That's all free, because they they switched to uh, Patreon to fund everything. Uh, oh, I have a message. Um, yeah, Freezy, what's up, man? You're welcome. 
Defcon, I skipped your model. What? Where you at? No, I went through yours. Mushy, what's going on? I actually have to go eat lunch, and then I'm going to be back. But you should join the Discord, because we're all doing this all the time. And actually, every Thursday, I usually do critiques as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Defcon. Uh, it'll be in the on the YouTube channel, or you can watch the VODs while you're waiting for me to uh, come back. I'll be gone for like an hour, hour and a half. Um, but, uh, yeah, you should join the discord. There's, a. Uh, will do a quick rundown of it and then I'll go. What do we got here? So here's the discord. Um, there's a rundown video of what we offer, which someone might be able to link. Actually, I can probably link that cause I think I pinned it. Yes. This one. This will give you the rundown. I'm in it. Are you? You just been quiet for a while or or you're not under the name that I assume you're under what is your name on here oh why is it Simon or why is it M mushy what is happening I'm confused people with different usernames confuse me <laughs> Anywho, okay. I'm going to close this stuff out, and then I will be back in an hour and a half. I heart your faces. Thanks for hanging out. I'll be back. I'll be back. Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop.